Well, we're going to dig into the next few verses of John chapter 6. I called this section, The King of Creation. It's a really well-known story, but it's worth us digging in and just making sure that we get clear why John has given us these details. They're different to in other gospel accounts. Although we do see Jesus walking on water in the other gospels, John has a very specific reason to be showing these verses. We need to remember John's purpose statement in John 20, verse 30 and 31, uh, where he tells us that he's giving us evidence about Jesus, which calls for belief in Jesus. And belief in Jesus leads to life through Jesus. And John is giving us further evidence about Jesus. Um, Those verses say that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing in his name, you may have life. Now, we see very clear evidence in this section that Jesus is the king of creation. He is indeed God. He can do what only God can do. And I do encourage you, just before I show some of what I've seen in the text, I encourage you just to read these few verses. Um, It was a massive event that John would have remembered very clearly. But he just records it in these five verses, there's six verses, and he's given us very specific details that he wants us to take note of. So just take some time, read through the passage yourself a few times, pray, and ask God to help you to understand his word. And then I'm just going to show you a few things that I've noticed in this text. One of the main tools that I used in understanding this passage was looking at the different characters, um, and the key characters in this section are the disciples. So the scene starts with the disciples by themselves because Jesus, as the other obvious key character, hasn't joined them yet. They get stuck in the storm and only later does Jesus approach them doing what makes the story famous. He's walking on the water. Now it's important to see two miracles in this section, not only is Jesus walking on water, which is incredible, but in verse 21 we see, as they let Jesus onto the boat, it says, immediately the boat reached the shore. Now that is another miracle. Um, They were out probably in the middle of the lake by this time, having rowed three or four miles. Um, Most who, who look at the geography of the area and understand the distance from one shore Um, working out roughly where the feeding of the 5,000 happened, rowing across to Capernaum. By three or four miles, it would have put them in the middle of the the lake. Uh, This is the Sea of Galilee. And so from being in the middle of the lake, as Jesus jumps on the boat with them, immediately they reach the shore. So there's two incredible miracles that take place in this section. One of the new things that we learn about Jesus or that Jesus says in this section which is very significant is these words uh, well they were frightened and don't be afraid and John wants us to see that when Jesus says those words don't be afraid it is very significant indeed and we'll dig into that in a moment to see just why it is so significant Just some other key context um, that's worth us, it's worth us noting is we've just seen uh, chapter 5, at the end of chapter 5 in verse 45 to 47, uh, Jesus points the Jewish leaders to Moses as uh, a witness who's pointing to him and saying that he is indeed God. So the whole of chapter 5 Uh, is giving us further proof and Jesus pointing to witnesses who all say that he is God. And so Moses is the last of those witnesses in 5 verse uh, 45 to 47. And what we see in chapter 6 is some real strong Exodus themes. So, So John wants our minds to think back to This one who was promised that Moses prophesied would come, a prophet like him, one greater than Moses. And that's what we see happening in John 6. 
Uh, the opening 15 verses with the feeding of the 5,000, the details given are very, very similar to, or they, they make our minds think of the situation when God's people were in the Exodus. Uh, there's a leader of God's people with his people out in the wilderness. Uh, they get hungry. And in the beginning of chapter 6, Jesus feeds them. Now, there's a few other things in this particular story that also should cause our minds to think about the Exodus story. And one of the key ones is these words here. It is I. Now, those same Greek words, which are the words echo eimi, are tra translated in chapter 8, verse 58, where Jesus says, Before Abraham was, I am. So that it is I is a translation of these words, echo eimi, which is translated elsewhere in the gospel as I am. Which, if you think back to the Exodus, this is the name that God gave to himself. Uh, when Moses said, who should I tell the people uh, is, has sent me? God says, I am has sent you. So it was the, the name Yahweh, um, the Lord. And so Jesus here saying, I am, don't be afraid. John wants us to think back to the Exodus. The great I am is now here walking on the water. And just as in the Exodus, Moses had led the people through the water, here one greater than Moses has arrived because he is walking on the water. He can do what no one else can do. And then just as Moses led the people safely across the Red Sea, so Jesus got his disciples safely to the shore. And this specific word immediately is used throughout the Gospels, consistently in the Gospels, for when Jesus does something miraculous. You can go and look at Matthew 8 verse 3, or Matthew 20 verse 34, Mark 1 verse 42, Luke 5 verse 13. That specific word immediately is often linked with Jesus doing something miraculous. And so John wants us to see Jesus doing something absolutely mind-boggling here. And we, aren't, we shouldn't miss the significance uh, of what is going on here. So the great I am walks on the water to come to his disciples. And then he says, don't be afraid. Now those are also words that ring throughout God's word as very good news from God. When God comes and says, don't be afraid, which we see in Genesis 15 with Abraham, or we see it in Genesis 26 with Isaac, we see it in Genesis 46 with Jacob and then we'll see it with Joshua and with Daniel at the beginning of the gospel with Mary and the, the shepherds. When God says don't be afraid it is very very good news indeed. But if we link this back with the Exodus story again uh, we see these words in Exodus 14. As God's people are trapped between the approaching uh, army of the Egyptians and the Red Sea God says through Moses, do not be afraid, stand firm, you will see the deliverance that the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. And then God leads them safely through the sea. Where here, Jesus walks to them on the sea, and then he leads them safely across the sea, immediately to the shore, to safety. So there are a whole lot of things happening in this story that should cause our minds to think back to the Exodus story. But also there are a couple of other themes uh, that are worth thinking about just in John's Gospel. So by now it was dark. We see in the beginning of John, John 1 verse 5 says, The light shines in the darkness. In this specific situation, Jesus, the light of the world, wasn't with his disciples. He hadn't joined them yet. So it was dark. If we look, uh, thinking theologically, uh, reflecting on the Old Testament, Psalm 107, uh, verse 28 to 30, are verses worth looking at where it says about God, that he guided them to their desired haven. And here we see Jesus fulfilling uh, a psalm like that, taking his people to safety. 
And what we're seeing throughout this section is John is painting this massive picture of Jesus. He did the impossible. This really happened. He walked on water. He is the king of creation. At the beginning, we're told in chapter 1 verse 3 that through him all things were made. So this water that he was walking on was water that he had made. He had set the laws of nature in place. And as the Lord of creation, he could defy those laws. And in this situation, that's what we see him doing. He's walking on the water that he made as if it is dry ground. And yes, that frightened his disciples. To see something like this should terrify us. The power of God on display here is mind-boggling and frightening. But then Jesus says, don't be afraid. And another wonderful place to go and think of a cross-reference is in Revelation chapter 1. In Revelation 1, uh, the same John was in another difficult situation and he saw the glorified Jesus. And in verse 17, he says that he fell down as though dead at the sight of him. So he was indeed terrified. But then Jesus said those same words, don't be afraid. He says, I am the living one. I have conquered death. There's nothing to be scared of anymore. And because of Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension, and then the Holy Spirit who he sent, um, he tells us in, in John 14, on the night before he went to the cross, in verse 26 to 27, we, we see him saying the counselor is going to come. And then he says, I leave my peace with you. Because of God in us, by the Spirit, we can have peace. And then verse 27 ends with those words, do not be afraid. So for those who trust in Jesus, who look at the evidence and believe that he really is God and trust in him, they receive life that begins now. And we have the down payment of that eternal life, the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And we are looking forward to that day when we will reach the golden shore of eternity with Jesus forever. And in this life, we can hear these words. We have the great I am as our God. Don't be afraid. We can trust him. He will get us through this life. That doesn't mean uh, a trouble-free life here on earth. But it does mean that in eternity, we will be with him in a place where there are no more storms, no more troubles, no, nothing to be frightened of anymore because then we will be with the great I am forever. So don't be afraid. John wants us to believe this. He wants us to trust in Jesus. He wants us to keep going. And I encourage you as you dig into this further and teach it to others, rejoice in the fulfillment that we see throughout scripture. These words, don't be afraid, are pointing us to the good news. And so when Jesus says them, they really are good news indeed. May we trust him more as we dig further into this passage. Thank you.